Is that the washing your hands? That's the truth. Washing your spirit, Father. Washing. Yeah, well. Send the drones. I like that. Uh, no, thanks, Mr. Chair. Councillor Van Wersch. No, thanks, Mr. Chair. Anyone else wants to speak? All those in favour? Uh, that's carried. Uh, Mr Chair, before we uh, move any further, I want just to uh, add to that uh, recommendation that we've just uh, carried. I'd like to put forward a motion, uh, being that the recommendation uh, that the planning application for the 100 lot sub 118 lot subdivision and the removal of native vegetation at Kilferra Road, Benalla, be considered at the Planning and Development Committee meeting scheduled for the 26th of August. Thank you, I'll Councillor. Move that. We have a seconder, Councillor Firth. <clears throat> Like to speak, Councillor Upston. Ah, uh, no, thanks, Mr. Chair. Councillor Firth. No, thanks, Mr. Chair. Anyone else like to speak? All those in favour? Adopted. <clears throat> Eight point three. Assembly of Councillors.
page 34. That's the report you noted, Councillor Upton, Councillor Davis. I'll speak to Councillor Upton. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Councillor Davis. No, thank you, Chair. Anyone else like to speak? All those in favour? That's carried. Uh, reports by officers. Authorisation and signing of documents. 9.2 2021 budget and the 2020 strategic uh, resources plan. Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm happy to present the 20. 21 budget and the SRP, as I call it, Strategic Resource Plan, for um, your consideration tonight. This document is a combination of six months' work from both councillors, staff and the community. And I'm happy to say we started the process in November 2019, focusing on the delivery of the objectives outlined in the council plan 2017 to 2021. One, I should say, and the priorities that were in that plan have formulated the basis of the budget. Throughout February to April, we have had numerous workshops. We have gone back through figures, we have looked at options, and we developed a proposed budget. This was advertised and has been out to the community, and I'm pleased to say that we did receive a number of submissions, which were considered by the council on the 22nd of July. Since the development of this budget, obviously the COVID situation has happened across the world and we, like everyone else, have been affected with, with impacts on revenue and expenditure. And the council has also been fortunate enough to receive the Victorian Grants Commission early payment um, of $2.2 million in June of the 1920 year. Our philosophy in developing the budget at Benalla is to only recognise grants when we receive them and we know we're going to receive them. So this 2021 budget was based on receiving the $2.2 million of grants in the year that it was going to be applied to. Because it was received early, it will overstate the revenue at present with $2.2 million more revenue than we will actually have. The good news is that we have the money in the bank from the 1920 year. So as outlined in the um, papers, I've suggested that it would be appropriate to adopt the budget excluding the 2.2 million because we're not going to receive it in the 2021 year. The impact is, is that you'll have a larger deficit because the money will be attributed to the year prior. Numerous other things have gone on during the last few months and I'm happy to report that a number of grants are on their way um, and one has been confirmed today. However, it's not included in the document because our philosophy is we don't include anything unless we know that it's confirmed. So as outlined in the position or as outlined in the paper, there are a number of items that have come through in the last few months that have influenced just what we should maybe step forward with in our budget in 2021. I might hand over to the CEO just to explain some of the capital um, highlights and some of the grant opportunities that are coming our way. Um, but the additional items in the resolution at the back on page 42 outline that I, I do recommend that we reduce the budget by the $2.2 million to allow for a greater understanding of the comparison between budget and forecast figures in the actual year. The impact will be that you will have a, a larger deficit because the 2.2 was received in the prior year. And there are several other recommendations throughout that paper for your consideration. Well, I'll hand over to the CEO. Thank you, through the, uh, through the chair. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate the staff and the councillors for the work that um, has gone into the preparation of the uh, 2021 uh, budget. Uh, we've always said that this year would be particularly tough, but obviously with the 
COVID-19, it has actually challenged most communities and um, obviously the council itself. Still yet to realise the full uh, impact on the council. Obviously, we're about four months into it now and nobody really knows when it's going to end. But um, pleasingly, we have uh, tried to almost set aside that there and keep moving forward uh, because the community is developing. And I think that um, there are some positive, positive uh, stories coming out of um, what we are doing, what the council has commenced a number of years ago. So I do congratulate the community and the council for the direction we're heading in. Some of the key uh, capital projects which we will be delivering this year, um, obviously the uh, new transfer station down at the uh, landfill. That's been on the uh, plans for oh, probably about three years now. So hoping to have that constructed by about uh, the end of the current uh, calendar year. So that's about a $900,000 build. Uh, some uh, road upgrades and significant uh, footpath upgrades as well. Uh, about $150,000 of footpath upgrades um, to help with accessibility throughout the town. So that's always very welcome. Uh, we will be taking delivery of new road maintenance equipment. Um, I think it's called the Jet Patcher. So it's a diversion of the way we've always done work in Vanilla, but it um, should see efficiencies throughout the operations and works department. So that, uh, we should take delivery of that piece of machinery uh, back end of September. So it's a long time in the waiting, but uh, well worth the wait, I would think. Some of the other work obviously uh, well publicised next door is the work for the Visitor Information and Museum. Uh, that's about a 1.6 to 1.8 dollar bill by the time we've added some additional works into that particular project. Looking to commence that in about January, February next year and uh, completion date uh, around the back end of 2021. So looking forward to that particular um, development. The Grundle Street Oval Sports Precinct, uh, there's some significant contributions from the user groups down there, junior AFL, the cricket, uh, the AMP Society and obviously council. Um, so that project uh, will be underway and hopefully be complete by about Christmas as well. So that, that'll be a significant new facility to be enjoyed by the users down there. Internally, um, one thing COVID has um, brought to bear is obviously our IT systems. Um, and obviously with the number of remote, um, remote meetings we hold now using Zoom, Teams, Skype, every other platform, um, it has exposed some weaknesses in, camels, in council's um, IT systems. So we are planning a significant upgrade and it is around about $330,000 by the time we finish it off. Um, a grant, uh, the Victorian government, and it hasn't been brought to account yet. Um, we're in the, we've, we've put the application in with the Victorian government has um, also given all rural councils in Victoria a $100,000 contribution to operating their IT. So that was very welcome. And we do thank the Victorian government for that because it has enabled us to go to that next level and basically set the council up for the next five years of our back end or our platform, our IT systems, which is quite significant for the council. Um, so some significant work there to be done. And once again, I do congratulate staff, um, our capital team, our operations team, have got some significant work to do. But because I didn't think they were busy enough, we've got a number of other, uh, other funding, funding opportunities coming up. And they are noted on page 37 in the report tonight. And as um, Cathy has stated, we generally don't bring these to account until the agreements are signed. And it is pleasing that we were notified uh, just yesterday that our submission for the drought funding um, has been confirmed, even though we were notified back in January. So the, uh, the Australian government has actually agreed to all of the projects that we've put up for that there. So one of the most significant um, projects that we um, will actually advertise next week is the community fund. And the council has set aside $335,000 uh, where community groups can apply for a range of projects up to a value of $20,000. So um, the intention is to try and get that out next week, Mr. Mayor, and hopefully turn those applications around uh, quite quickly, hopefully by about mid-September and start to get that money out to a lot of those community groups. Consultation was done on that back in, uh, I was going to say March, but that was down such a long time ago, February, March. So we do know that there are a lot of community groups Looking, uh, looking forward to that particular uh, funding. Another important one there um, is mental health. Obviously, uh, in normal times, mental health is very important, but we are noticing through the COVID situation, mental health is starting to become even more um, uh, prominent, right through, not only in Vanilla, but right throughout Australia. So we put up a mental health um, 
funding for that particular project. So we'll work with our, our team to deliver some of that. Sale yards conversion, uh, Councillor Hearn and Councillor Davis have been a part of uh, the user group down there. So it will enable us to do some works down there to convert um, our sale yards into more of a transit yard. So that's another interesting project. I won't sort of detail them all tonight. And on my desk at the moment are the draft agreements for the building works package through the Victorian government of $2 million. Uh, council will be contributing $500,000, but not in this year's budget. That will go through to 21-22. We have proposed 17 separate projects, and I know the Mayor has spoken to the media about this in past weeks. We'll get those details out more broadly, but um, some of those... And it is targeted for the Lake Precinct and through the CBD. Uh, Faulkner Drive upgrade is one of those particular projects that's been on the table for quite some time. An upgrade of Denny Street car park, which is um, very widely used. Uh, we have got some money set aside for a potential other car park, which we'll talk about in another night, um, and some other upgrades throughout the Lake Precinct and obviously through the CBD. Another interesting project, which we've had some initial discussions with uh, Regional Roads Victoria, is an upgrade to the streetscape down Bridge Street. So we've got the team working on what that could potentially look like. Looking to do some community consultation on that particular project. We're targeting about October, November, but we're just really seeing how the COVID situation pans out, but an increase to the streetscape of Bridge Street would be highly uh, welcomed, I would think. So that's, um, once again, thank you to the Victorian government on that there. Um, another significant, um, a lot of money come again from the, uh, the, the Australian government. This one's called the Local Road and Community Infrastructure Fund. The council was awarded $975,000. Uh, that application was uh, given to us oh, probably about two months ago now. I'll lodge that by Friday. In that particular fund, we're looking at about seven different projects. Uh, some of those are road work. Some of those are obviously some upgrades to uh, Waller Street and Churchill Reserve. Uh, potentially some work to the drill hall, um, obviously a well-known building in town, um, potentially some alterations or some upgrades to the senior citizens hall. And we're looking at potentially further upgrades to the footpaths throughout the number as well. Um, and another significant uh, project there is some work on Murray Road, uh, which obviously has been a hot topic for quite some time. And obviously with the with the advent of LS Precast and the increase of traffic down there, uh, we've been in discussions with LS Precast and obviously the government about um, upgrades to Murray Road. And we do thank the Australian government for you know, that um, $975,000. And once again, hopefully I should have that complete by Friday. Uh, just by chance, the $2 million and the 975 have to have complete by Friday. So we'll see how we go. And the other one, which we're still in discussion with the Victorian government, is the Working for Victoria Fund. Uh, it is around $1.565 million. Uh, this was uh, first announced by the Victorian government about three months ago. Once again, it sounds like it was such a long time ago. But um, through that particular fund, the council was given the opportunity to look at a range of projects across the region. Um, and it's and we put up about 32 positions in that there. A lot of our strategic plans and our strategic uh, um, growth plans, which I've mentioned in my uh, introduction to the budget, um, we're hoping to put in through that as well. Um, even down to um, increasing hygiene and um, hiring cleaners to go through town as well. So there's a whole range of projects in there. It's not replacing any current employment. It's actually additional employment uh, for what we believe um, could be done for the council. That particular piece of funding, um, I haven't got confirmed yet and I'm still in discussions with the Victorian government. But um, once again, I would like to thank the councillors for their positive deliberation and their guidance through the preparation of this year's budget. Um, and once again, there's a number of projects here and the timelines are a little bit tight, but uh, we are trying to stretch them out as far as we can because just in our normal, uh, our normal capital program, we deliver about somewhere between five and seven million dollars worth of projects a year. Suddenly we're sitting at somewhere between 10 and 12 million dollars for next year. So. We have to get our skates on, but it's a great opportunity for the council to deliver a range of projects for our growing community. And um, just on another matter, if you would have seen the news this week, it was reported that Vanilla is in the top 10 fastest growing communities in Australia. It's a 5.08% forecast. So mm -hmm. um, it, I think it just reinforces the need to make sure this money is well targeted. And once again, thank you, council. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, are there any questions? Or 
Okay. Kathy, here we've got expended type, sorry, which is a total of um, 6.345 million. And when you go to funded by nearly $8 million. So why are we borrowing a million dollars? I know we've got 4.3 million in cash in hand, but why are we then borrowing a million? Uh, our strategic resource, sorry, our strategic resource plan allowed for um, the inclusion of loans every second year. We, we sort of originally started with 500,000 a year and that's included in our projections. And, and then having the experience of going to market and taking up the loans, we find it's more effective to go at a million dollar um, level. And so that's why we were proposing the million. The um, cash flow, when you undertake cash flow, we have three months, the end of May, we receive our final instalment and then we don't get another bundle of money until September for our first instalment for the next year. So we need to have at least, I like to have two months operating um, to cover for cash. And so when we do an analysis of the, the workflow, the capital works do tend to all happen in the second half of the year because the first half of the year is normally preparing for the procurement process and then a lot more work is done in the January to May. So we take up the million dollars to ensure that we have enough cash flow. You also notice that we do nearly pay down a million dollars in loan repayments in a year. So we are over the life of our strategic resource plan and capital or council plan from the 17 to 2020, we actually are reducing the debt. Okay. This proposal includes a, an additional amount to cover the um, grant that we received for the Visitors Information Centre refurbishment. So that's another proposed loan that we're planning on increasing if, if that goes through. And the other one is for the um, wheelie, wheel loader and the upgrade of the IT equipment for the landfill and increase our, but our loans. Okay. Councillor Bird. Yes, Kathy, with regards to non-carrot liabilities on page 21, the provisions of $8.4 million. Is that plan for re the, the landfill rehabilitation? Okay, so it's clear that's all of that, is it, or that's just the biggest part? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We also include the um, annual leave, long service leave provisions for staff as well. Um, that's another provision that we we required under the Act to provide for. But yes, the landfill is a big component of our provisions in our non-current liabilities, and it's not a cash-funded item. Uh, uh, maybe to the CEO with regards to page 44, we've got um, staff training. I'm very happy to see that we've made a sizable increase, 66% uh, of the staff training. Um, can you indicate to us what kind of training that will take? Through the chair, thanks, Councillor. Uh, staff training uh, budget, um, it, it's, there's never enough training, I think, Councillor, first, to be quite honest. Um, and it is a range of training. Some of it is statutory, some of it's compliance, some of it is just to further educate staff. Um, and we're very lucky that um, in the organisation there's a lot of free training as well. So that's not for to account either. Uh, one of the things we are looking at doing this year is doing um, a, a deeper dive into the culture of the council potential for the management training. Um, and that even goes down to the next level to the coordinators as well. So very mindful that uh, training um, is, it's essential for organisations such as the council, um, our allocation that we've got in there. We think that's right for next year, but um, over time, I would like to think that we can increase that, but it has to be very targeted. So it has to deliver an outcome. So it's, it's um, I think this year with the COVID, it sort of brought a lot of things to a conclusion a lot quicker than normal. But uh, next year, I'd like to think, or sorry, this current year, I'd like to think that we'll fully expand that training budget because the returns are there with an increased uh, uh, skill set throughout the council. Councillor Hearn and Councillor Alexander. Thank you to you, Mr. Chair. Um, Councillor Hearn, you've been working with the council for a number of years. Um, 
uh, querying on page 39, the cost of, that we're borrowing for the new loader, it would seem to um, be for a 930, I think was, in was the, roughly what we were looking at when we were doing, looking through the machines. I'm just curious, since we do have the 966H um, on lease and we have discussed that it was a larger machine, um, but a replacement of it was a higher amount. Um, I have done a bit of research into the machines too, just wondering about popularity as that has not come back to us yet. What is the best machine for the fit? Um, a lot of landfills do use the 966H. So I just wondered, if, are we actually borrowing enough money in case that is what we do really need? Thank you, happy to answer that question, uh, Councillor Hearn. Uh, the team down there have been, um, obviously our operations team, have assessed what is suitable for down there. And it's fair to say that a lot of the uh, work that the current loader does is light, light work. It's not working hard, it's only doing about 800 hours a year. Um, we believe the budget that we've got set aside of $370,000 is sufficient uh, to backfill uh, the current machine. Um, it is a smaller machine we're looking at, but it's still a very suitable machine for the environment that we've got down there. But we haven't made a decision on the final model yet, but we believe that $370,000 is enough scope of a smaller machine and it still uh, leaves ourselves open to looking at a good second-hand machine, a larger one, low hours, but must have uh, the warranty and all of the servicing and the backup as well. So, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. I notice um, the EPA levy will go up by 24%. Is that because of what was announced earlier in the year, or is that just a normal increase, or is that a normal increase plus it's going to go up again? Um, so I have an answer to that, please. Three, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> the original proposal from the EPA was to increase the levy straight away and, and with COVID coming on, they delayed the increase in the EPA levy till the 31st of December. So we've actually allowed for an increase for six months, um, which is the percentage. And we've also looked at our, our level of volume that's coming through to try and ensure that that accommodates enough to cover it. And I think at the moment that should be sufficient and that's why there is a funny figure of further percentage increase because it's halfway through and then they will have step further increases over the next year and a half. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Thank you, Mr Chair. Through you, Mr Chair. Uh, the CEO, a very ambitious suite of capital projects this year. Um, I would think that money for the government has to be spent on time. Uh, I was going to get back to them. My question is, do these larger projects, can we, can we um, source, outsource staff to manage some of those projects or would you be expecting to do that with your team that you have at the present time? <laughs> Thank you for the question, just through the chair. Uh, it, it is a, it's an interesting question because there's two parts to it. Um, one of it is um, just the nature of the funding agreements. Um, if we are not hitting the deadlines and we have the possibility to extend, uh, for instance, the big one of $2 million, we've got about two years to deliver a lot of those projects. So trying to push some of those ones out a little bit further that I know that I can deliver the ones that we must up front. Through the working for the Victoria Fund, the intention through that particular funding stream was to bring in two additional project managers to assist Gerard and the team and the capital delivery team to do the bulk of that work over a six to nine month period. Um, and to back in that, I'm also in discussions with some neighbouring councils to share some potential project management because they're all in the same boat as us where they've got big capital programs and looking to see if there are opportunities where we could potentially um, work with other councils to deliver like projects across the region. So there is a strategy in place that we'll be able to deliver a lot of these projects. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions concerning the budget? Oh, sorry, <coughs> the okay. The recommendation is on 
page 42, it's a seven part recommendation. Would someone like to move it as read? Councillor Firth, Councillor Ferns. I'd like to speak, Councillor Firth. Um, I would like to, Chair, uh, really, this particular council um, has been working for the last three and a half years, I think, to deliver a budget like this. Um, and I think it speaks to what we all had in mind when we were elected. Um, it's taken a fair bit of work uh, by staff and CEOs to, to get us to this situation. Um, and I think the community should hopefully have a look at this budget and see exactly what we've been going for. Um, and I have great delight in actually commending this to the, to the council, purely because I think it's, it really is the start of Benalla's real growth. Um, and hopefully we'll see the full potential of Benalla come about where many of us local residents of Benalla our lifetime have been saying all our life, Benalla's going to go somewhere. It's just so well positioned and it's just a great place. Well, I think by the time we finish, the CEO and staff finish doing what they're doing in the next 12 months, under this budget, I think we will finally have our day in the sun. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Firth. Councillor Byrne. Um, I'd like to say, um, reiterate what Councillor Firth has just said and congratulate our staff um, on the great job that they've done and the councillors and um, Thank them for put, thank the staff for putting up with all of our questions and making it very clear that we do know what's going on. Thank you. Is there anyone else like to speak? <clears throat> Councillor Davis. Well, you all know me and I would normally not not be supportive of borrowing so much money. However, we have to have a vision. The CEO's just said there was Penalis growing in the top 10 in Australia. Our four purposes of councillors put a lake here, they put an art gallery here, and, and a lot of councillors have passed away in the last several years of, of all had that vision of doing things for Penalis. I know we've got a virus on our hands at the moment, we've got to put that aside and move forward. I'm quite comfortable our findings, Cathy, and, um, and all our staff and the councillors and the CEO and the management team can work through this. It's going to be a lot of heartache next year with cash flows. Um, Councillor no, Council Van Wersch asked a question before about, about why we had money in the bank, we had to borrow money. But it's a tight line of having cash flows. And cash is going to be king next year and we're just going to have to manage our business very tightly. It's not going to be, it's not going to be, a, a, it's not going to be easy for anybody. I mean, we'll still have to make some hard decisions next year, but I'm quite comfortable on the management we have at Benalla, that when all these projects are out, the vision of Benalla, we don't have to rest our laurels and say, like Councillor first said, Benalla's a great place, because you have to keep making it better to make it greater all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Would anyone else like to speak? Councillor Alexander. Yes, thank you, Mr Chair. I'd like to commend um, the budget. It, it's an ambitious one and there are a lot of projects there. Some of them we've wished and hoped for for many years and we're getting some money thrown at us virtually and we have to make sure we use it wisely and balance it with some of the money that we have to borrow. It's just a fact of life. Um, if any of us have been in business, we all know how it works. And I um, know it'll put a great strain on the council for employees to deliver this budget and we should make sure that we support them in every way to get it done. And I think once it is done, especially um, jobs like the um, across the road, the Visitor Information Centre, that'll be a wonderful asset for Penella. And the less exciting things like um, things that patch the roads, I'm sure that that'll be appreciated as well. So I commend this budget as well. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Okay, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 9.3, work cover insurance premium payments. Um, 
Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, tonight's report brings to a, a an invoice that normally would come to council and be approved by the CEO. However, tonight, um, because it goes over the CEO's $200,000 uh, delegation, it is presented to councillors. Um, as can be seen from the report, this is quite a decrease on what has usually been paid by the council, uh, primarily due to an outstanding claim that has reached the uh, its maximum cost to the council. Also, there's been a general rise in uh, work cover premiums. And um, as per the report, if we do pay by 31st of August, we can take a 5% discount on top of that. So the um, report's here for uh, the council's information and approval. As requested, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Any questions, Mr. Barber? Would you like to move it? Happy to move, Mr. Chair. Councillor Upson, second to Councillor Davis. Would you like to speak, Councillor Upson? Uh, no, thanks, Mr. Chair. Councillor Davis. No, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Following on the yes, Councillor Hearn. Um, I'd just like to say I think it's really good that we're paying it up front, um, having paid work cover insurance for many, many years. It's great to be able to get the discount offered as well. Thank you. All those in favour? That's carried. Uh, 9.4, Council Action Pending. No further update. There's only one. Uh, I was going to ask the question. <laughs> ask the question. <laughs> Um, item number one, the, um, the Irwin Road turnaround. It's been on the books, I reckon, for 12 months. Longer. <laughs> Any update, please, through the chair? <laughs> uh, just through the chair, thank you for the question, <coughs> Councillor Alexander. A lot of things get blamed on COVID this time of the year, so I think we'll, just, uh, we'll blame it on COVID, but I am still um, trying to work out um, where that's heading. Every day is a day closer, so that's the way I look at things. <laughs> Hopefully in 12 months time, we're not asking the same question. We'll see. Any other questions? Okay, uh, through that, the recommendation is on page 45, Councillor Upton, Councillor Davis. Speak Councillor Upton. No, it's Mr Chair. Councillor Davis. Anyone else like to speak? All those in favour? Carry on. <clears throat> Item number 10. Mayor and Council of Attendance Committees and Civic Functions. Uh, does anyone have any changes to that? Councillor Davis. Sorry, uh, during the items, I didn't attend the Municipal Emergency Management Planning Committee meeting. Okay, now, the changes to that amendment approved by Councillor Upson. Alexander, speak, no, just chair. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? All those in favour? That's carried. Uh, reports by councillors. Councillor Alexander. Uh, it's just a small report, um, Mr. Mayor. I, um, some of us on the um, Benalla West Estate um, redevelopment program has asked the Department of Human Services to come and speak to council about the project and I just heard today it was supposed to happen next week I think and it has to be cancelled because all the workers are dealing with COVID-19 and they can't um, but I just uh, ask everyone to keep it on the agenda and uh, make sure that they do come and speak to council about the project. Thank you. Is any other councillors have the report? Okay, the recommendation is on page 49. The report to be noted. Move Councillor Hearn, Councillor Firth. Speak Councillor Hearn. Councillor Firth, anyone else like to speak? <coughs> no, that is carried. Uh, notice of motion. Bill. Notice of precision motion. Bill. Urgent business. Uh, confidential business is a recommendation that the meeting be closed for confidential business on page 51. Move Councillor Upson, seconded Councillor Davis. All those in favour? 